Suck, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, it seems more and more I'm getting asked about whether finasteride can hurt your liver. I'm not sure exactly why this question keeps coming up, but it is a valid question, Chooms. I don't want the information I provide to put anyone's health at risk under any circumstances, whether it be liver health or anything else for that matter. I just want to help you get your hair back, homies. Now, if you look at the finasteride package insert, there is no mention of any liver side effects occurring in any the clinical trials that involve thousands of subjects. So that's good news, right? The only mention of liver function, in fact, is the warning that finasteride should be used with caution in people with pre-existing liver disease since finasteride is metabolized by the liver after all. Well, maybe the reason this liver question keeps stubbornly coming up is because of the work of everybody's favorite finasteride-hating doctor of all time, Dr. Trash. Dr. Trash is the best friend of every finasteride-hating cult on earth. He wrote the mother of all finasteride fear-mongering articles, and the article is titled, quote, Health risk associated with long-term finasteride finasteride and dutasteride use, it's time to sound the alarm." Unquote. Now, I have already debunked this crappy amateurish study. Like all anti-finasteride studies, it is particularly terrible because it is tainted by selection bias issues, but if you want to see a more in-depth dismantling of that study, then I talk about it in my DHT as a Trash Hormone Part 2 video, which I'll link below. I'll also link below another video where I debunk some of his other terrible research, and I recommend watching it because it's actually pretty funny of just how bad it is. But Dr. Trash, what he really is, he's a good source for somebody who wants to give themselves a nocebo effect from finasteride or dutasteride, and I imagine that the majority of people who are imagining they have persistent side effects from 5-AR inhibitors likely feel that way largely due in part to Dr. Trash's research. Anyways, in this trashy article, not only does Dr. Trash claim that finasteride and dutasteride harm the liver, he makes the claim in the very first section of the article. The section is titled, quote, Finasteride and dutasteride induce liver lipid accumulation and steatosis, unquote. Well, despite the lack of reports of liver disease in people taking finasteride, Dr. Trash really wants to make a case that finasteride and dutasteride are bad for your liver. He first reviews animal research on the effects of finasteride on the liver. He points out that the type 1 and type 2 5-AR isoenzymes are present in the liver, which isn't surprising since the 5-AR enzyme is found throughout the entire body. But since they are in the liver, he proposes, quote, inhibition of these enzymes may elicit adverse metabolic consequences, unquote. To prove this, he starts with this animal study right here titled, quote, 5A reductase type 1 deficiency or inhibition predisposes to insulin resistance, hepatic steatosis, and liver fibrosis in rodents, unquote. So in case you're wondering uh, what steatosis means, steatosis basically just means fatty liver. The first part of the study was done on rats that were genetically engineered to completely lack the type 1 5A or isoenzyme. This would be kind of like someone being born with a genetic defect where they lack the type 1 5-AR isoenzyme. This is not, however, analogous to people taking finasteride, which in humans only significantly blocks the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme. It's not even analogous to humans taking dutasteride because even though dutasteride blocks both the type 1 and the type 2 5-AR isoenzymes, it does not completely block either of those enzymes. Anyways, even with these rats who had absolutely no type 1 5-AR isoenzyme, there was no significant difference and their liver function when they were on a normal diet. It was only when they were fed a high-fat diet that they developed weight gain, diabetes, and a fatty liver. So the investigators saw similar findings in these rats when they were given finasteride. But keep in mind here, Chooms, that in rodents, finasteride is a potent blocker of both the type 1 and type 2 isoenzymes compared to humans, where the main effect is on the type 2 isoenzyme, and it doesn't have any notable effect on the type 1 isoenzyme at all. Also, human livers have both the type 1 and type 2 5-AR isoenzymes, whereas rodents only have the type 1 isoenzyme in their livers. That's a big interspecies difference right there, so it is really questionable whether these results apply to humans on finasteride, which doesn't block the type 1 isoenzyme, or even to humans on dutasteride, which doesn't completely block the type 1 isoenzyme. The results also imply that a high-fat diet was part of the problem, and that none of this occurred on a normal diet. So, this really is just a weak animal study, and many animal studies don't predict what happens in human beings. After all, rats eating large amounts of saccharin developed cancer, but the FDA eventually determined that there was no risk to humans, and that's why saccharin is found commonly in diet soft drinks. The next study Dr. Trash mentions is another animal study which looked at mice that had either the type 1 5-AR isoenzyme gene deleted or the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme gene deleted. These mice were fed either a normal diet or what the researchers were 
referred to as an American lifestyle obesity syndrome diet, which included high amounts of trans fats, which are less common now in food products than they were 10 years ago due to the discovery that they contribute to heart disease. The diet also contained high fructose corn syrup, which is still a very common sugar found in junk food and soft drinks in the United States, although I think high fructose corn syrup is banned in Europe. Well, it turned out in this study that mice on a normal healthy mouse diet did not develop fatty livers even if they lacked the type 1 or type 2 5 air enzyme. However, mice with the type 1 5 air deficiency who also ate the absolutely disgusting American fast food diet did get fatty liver as compared to control mice or mice with type 2 5 air deficiency. Well, the same objections apply to this study as in the previous study, namely that there are big interspecies differences in the livers of mice and men. But there is a bigger, bigger problem here. Dr. Trash can't help but reveal his insatiable hate boner against finasteride here because he doesn't mention that there was actually a benefit to the mice who lacked the 5-AR isoenzymes. If you look at the title of the study, it's titled, quote, Loss of 5-A reductase type 1 accelerates the development of hepatic steatosis but protects against hepatocellular carcinoma in male mice, unquote. You heard that right. A lack of either the type 1 or the type 2 5-AR isoenzymes enzyme reduce the incidence of hepatic cancer in these mice. In the case of the absence of the type 1 isoenzyme, the incidence of liver cancer was reduced to zero. But Dr. Trash doesn't bother mentioning this finding at all. And why would he? He has an agenda to make finasteride look bad because he's on the PFS network's payroll. That's not hyperbole. If you look at all this research about finasteride, you'll see that the research is funded by the PFS Foundation, which is the predecessor to the PFS network, which is a litigation business that seeks to make the alleged victims of finasteride into millionaires. He's literally a paid propagandist masquerading as a legitimate researcher. Now, I'm not, of course, claiming that taking finasteride or dutasteride can prevent liver cancer, but that claim is equally valid to the claim that taking either drug causes fatty liver. If you want to extrapolate the results of rodent studies to humans, you can't pick and choose the results that fit your agenda. That's called cherry picking, but that is exactly what Dr. Trash is doing here because, once again, he has an agenda to make finasteride look bad and he doesn't care about the facts. So let's go ahead and move on to the human studies. I'll go in publication order here. First, there's this study published in 2003. Dr. Trash mentions this study and says, quote, In a population-based study, men with fatty livers had reduced relative excretion of 5A reduced cortisol metabolites, resulting in liver fat accumulation, unquote. However, look at the title of this article again. The investigators found an association between the enzyme 5 beta reductase and fatty liver, not 5-alpha reductase, which is the enzyme affected by finasteride and dutasteride. In fact, in the article, the investigators specifically did not find an association between 5-AR and fatty liver. Here's what the researchers actually say in the article, quote, the A-ring reduction quotients reflecting 5-beta reductase activity were strongly positive, positively associated with liver fat content, but the quotient reflecting 5-alpha reductase activity was not correlated with liver fat, unquote. So, I don't know if Dr. Trash is just misreading this thing deliberately or if he's just trying to be an asshole here, but let's get to the final two human studies he mentions. The first one is this study here titled, quote, 5-alpha reductase type 1 modulates insulin sensitivity in men, unquote. This was a double-blind study of 46 men with benign prostatic hyperplasia randomized to either dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams per day, finasteride at 5 milligrams per day, or tem... Tamsulosin, excuse me, that's also known as Flomax, and it's also a prostate drug, but unlike finasteride and dutasteride, this one doesn't affect the 5-AR enzyme. The study looked at the sensitivity of the liver and adipose tissue to insulin after three months of treatment with these drugs. What the investigators found was that only dutasteride affected insulin sensitivity in these men. There was no change in insulin sensitivity on finasteride or on the control drug Tamsulosin. There was also an increase in body fat on dutasteride only. The effect of dutasteride was not due to any changes in the liver's handling of insulin, it was purely due to changes in the sensitivity to insulin in the peripheral tissues. As the researchers say here, quote, 
Whereas hepatic insulin sensitivity was preserved, dutasteride strikingly decreased glucose disposal during high-dose insulin infusion consistent with impaired insulin sensitivity in peripheral organs, including skeletal muscle and or adipose tissue. This contrasted with an improvement in peripheral insulin sensitivity after three months treatment in the finasteride and tamsulosin groups, unquote. So the investigators showed that only the type 1 5 air isoenzyme is present in fat tissue, and so the changes in insulin sensitivity were due to the blocking of the type 1 isoenzyme with dutasteride. What the article makes clear, though, is that the liver is not involved in these changes and that finasteride actually improved insulin sensitivity, which are all points that Dr. Trash conveniently omits. The last human study involving 5-AR blockade in the liver that Dr. Trash quotes is titled, quote, Dole-5-alpha reductase inhibition promotes hepatic lipid accumulation in man, unquote. This study was done on 12 healthy male volunteers. In these subjects, metabolic testing was performed before and after three weeks of treatment with either finasteride at 5 mg per day or dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day. So, what were the results? The results of the study basically were the opposite of the study we just covered. In this study, dutasteride did not affect whole body insulin sensitivity, but it did affect hepatic insulin sensitivity and cause fatty accumulation in the liver. Remember the previous study found the opposite. Like in the previous study, we just mentioned, finasteride had no effect on insulin sensitivity. In any case, the changes in liver fat in the study were small, though the study notes that the duration of the treatment was short. So these small human studies show some conflicting results on whether or not dutasteride can cause fatty liver. These same studies show very clearly, though, that finasteride does not cause fatty liver. As expected, though, Dr. Trash casts all of this in the most negative light possible because not only is he a dermatologist, he's also a spin doctor. So let's see if we can rely on another source for whether or not finasteride can cause liver problems since Dr. Trash is so full of shit it's coming out of his ears. This entry on finasteride is from the NIH-sponsored publication titled Liver Talks. The assessment indicates that finasteride does not cause clinical liver injury. The entry states, quote, Finasteride has been associated with a low rate of serum aminotransferase elevation that in controlled trials was no higher than, uh, than with placebo therapy. These elevations were transient and rarely required dose modification, have occurred with both the 5 mg dose for prostatic hypertrophy and the 1 mg dose for hair growth. There have been published reports of transient serum enzyme elevations occurring during finasteride therapy, but none of clinically apparent liver injury. Likelihood score E, unlikely cause of clinically apparent liver injury, unquote. Looking in the same book for information on dutasteride, the entry is pretty much the same. As you can see here, there have been no published reports of clinically apparent liver injury for either drug. So like many drugs, Finasteride and dutasteride can cause mild elevation of liver function tests, but no clinically evident liver disease. Many drugs, including co common antibiotics, NSAIDs, and others can cause mild elevations of liver enzymes without any liver damage because of the way these drugs are metabolized by the liver. Despite this, these drugs are still considered liver safe and should cause no issues to anyone unless they have some pre-existing liver disease. So you may be thinking, but Kevin, I have heard you say it's okay to use up to 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride per day. There there's no way that can be liver safe, bro. Well, as it turns out, even when dutasteride is titrated all the way up to 2.5 milligrams per day, which will suppress twice the amount of scalp DHT as one milligram of finasteride, 80% versus 40%, that still is safe for the liver. Studies have been used with 2.5 milligrams per day, a dose to test liver health, in fact, such as this study of 399 men with benign prostate hyperplasia who mega dose dutasteride with doses as high as five milligrams per day. That's 10 avo dark capsules. Even in extremely high doses like that, there was still no evidence of any liver side effects. I should mention, however, that liver problems are still fairly common in the USA, so regardless of whether or not you plan to use a 5-air inhibitor, you should probably consider abstaining from alcohol at least. Or if you're going to drink, at least try to avoid daily drinking and weekend binge drinking as these behaviors can very easily lead to liver problems down the road, which might make it difficult to use any prescription drug, not just finasteride. So the bottom line here is that that all of this trashy, fear-mongering bro science about finasteride, dutasteride, and liver health is just more anti-finasteride propaganda from the losers who have decided that since they can't take finasteride, that nobody should be allowed to take it. They can kick and scream all they want, but the data simply does not back up their claims. Their opinions are based on emotion and not on science. And as Christopher Hitchens once famously said, that which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. So the next time someone tells you to avoid finasteride, 
last ride. Tell them to go piss up a rope because you don't have to suffer for their sake. So with that, thank you, Chooms. I'll see you all next time. Take care.